Welcome to Spoiled Sports Episode 4. It's going to be a, a great one as usual. I fully expect it to be the best ever. Mainly because Pee Wee promised not to play with crap while he talks. Out of four. Usually you can hear him screwing with a pen or the cap to a water bottle or tapping on something. Yeah, but um, I'm sitting on my hands today. Not doing anything. Alright, our first topic for discussion today is going to be baseball. Opening day was last week. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple times. Yes. <laughs> The Indians canceled their game, what, an hour and a half before the gates opened? Something or right like around that. opening yeah. time, hour and a half before the game? An hour and a half to two hours before the 4 10 start or whatever it was. Because it would have been uncomfortable. Yeah. And not only uncomfortable for the players, but for the fans. You know what's uncomfortable for the fans? Any game around this time in the New England. <laughs> Or northern Midwest areas. I guess what was really uncomfortable was paying $30 for parking and not seeing a game. <laughs> Last time I went to opening day, all the parking lots were full. Mm -hmm. So I parked in a gravel lot behind the trailer of a semi so no cop could see it and ticket me. That worked out well, right? The only question was, was my car going to be there when I got back? <laughs> yeah, that's always... It was. I parked in some places near Fenway that, that were like that. I used to park <laughs> behind the uh, dormitories for BU. I used to take the spots that some of the students probably wanted. <laughs> I came out one time and I saw some other car who had done the same thing and his door had been chained to the chain link fence where he was parked. So I don't know what was going on with that, but that's when I started finding another way to park. I actually had to jump a curb to get to that spot. There were a bunch of other people parking there, but I made sure I hid yeah. my car. And that that was the opening day where the Indians opened with the Blue Jays, uh -huh. and it went 13 innings. Oh, boy. I think. Or I know it went extras. Oh, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I, I can never afford to go again. It was a last-minute invite. Yeah. But So that was kind of a, uh, a mess-up on that part. <laughs> yeah, it was. Along with all the prices for the food. Oh, boy. They, they open all these great new restaurants, but the prices are ridiculous. I'm not paying 12 to $16 for a hamburger. I know. I'm going to stop at Wendy's on the way back and gra grab a dollar burger. Yeah, that, that, was, <laughs> that was a little much. Of course, we, did, we yeah. didn't feel the same way on a beer, though. No, I, the beer was kind <laughs> of worth it. Granted, I didn't expect it to be $12 for a beer. <laughs> $12. I expected 9 bucks. Yeah, I didn't think we'd get into double figures, but I guess that's what it's like. It's funny, I was talking with a guy on Facebook who's in Boston. And he was saying that he heard a, an announcer for the Red Sox, a new play-by-play -play guy, telling people not to be upset, telling Red Sox fans not to be upset that the prices were so high. If, if you didn't want to pay 12 bucks for a beer, uh, go see the Indians play and pay 4 bucks. Well, huh. there, there are no $4 beers anywhere. Yeah, there are. Where's that? We have four dollar beers at the. We have four dollar beers at the tribe games. They're smaller. Oh, really? It's about a can. Oh, yeah, I and didn't... it's usually like PBR or like oh, some crap yeah. beer. I didn't see any. Well, because we were at the wrong side of the stadium. It's over in right oh, field. Okay, so you right. can get a four dollar beer. You can get a you can get a three dollar beer. At the casino, yeah. No, you can get a three dollar beer at the game technically. Really. Okay. You pay thirteen dollars for the oh, district that's tickets. Right. Yeah, it's basically just three dollars more than the bleacher seats, and you get a free beer. Well, that's, that's what Jay and I do, along with pre gaming at the casino for happy hour. That's what you ought to do. Then. Where every beer on draft at the casino during happy hour up in Cleveland, three dollars. Guinness, three dollars. Bud Light, Budweiser, three dollars. So, All of it, three dollars. So if we could get four dollar beers at the at the stadium. Why did you let me give buy you a twelve dollar beer the other night? Because you suggested it. Well, that was a bad. You were the suggestion. one who suggested. Oh look, they have white Raja. <laughs> that was a bad suggestion. We gonna get a white Raja? And you should have said no, Dad. Depends on who's paying, <laughs> Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What a sap. Hey, I bought my beers at the casino. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we went to game two of the Sox and Indians. 
The one where uh, Mike Napoli hit the oh. go-ahead home run in the seventh. What a shot. I, I, I'm actually not even mad about it. I'm glad that if anyone beat us, it was Mike Napoli. Someone on a team I like and a player who I like. Yeah. It was actually a pretty entertaining game. There was a lot going on. The wind was blowing out. We saw, what, four or five homers. Yeah, when Brock Holt goes deep, you know the wind's blowing out. Yeah. It was Granted, a- his was a shot. The only one that I think wouldn't have gone if it wasn't so windy would have been Hanley's. Yeah. And that's because it was a bit of a liner and he won oppo with it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of an uncomfortable night weather-wise. Stiff wind blowing. Temperature in the high 30s, I think. Yeah. It was not great, but the weather, it was a good game. The Browns game I went to had better weather. The Browns game I went to, it was against the Niners. What Was that in December? It was a December game. Oh. 70 degrees and partly cloudy. Jeez. And the Indians game I go to is 35 and windy and uh, drizzly. Yeah, what's up with that? At least I saw a better a better game from the Indians. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was it was a real entertaining game. Like if the weather sucked and the uh they played like the Browns usually do in bad weather. Yeah. <laughs> well I did there were a lot of Red Sox fans at the game that night. Um There were always are in Cleveland. Yeah, well they, they travel well and you know, I was a little disappointed. Well, I don't know if I could, the right word is disappointed, but there were a really sparse crowd, so yeah. it was about half Red Sox fans, and you could hear them starting up the chant, Let, here we go Red Sox, or let's go Red Sox, mm. and then some Tribe fans would drown them out with let's go Tribe. Or booze. Yeah. Or, yeah. And then the Red Sox <laughs> fans started out with Yankee suck. And everyone joined in. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think part, the main reason there weren't people there was it's a Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it, was, not, it wasn't a special game. It even the the technical opener, the yeah. rescheduled opener, people didn't go to because it's not. It wasn't the opener. Right. It wasn't the opener. It, it was a cold night, game two, and I, that's typical for mm-hmm. baseball in general and Cleveland in particular. That uh, they they don't draw yeah. super well, and they draw even worse than that when it comes to uh, early spring games after the opener. I would have thought more people would go just to see Big Poppy one last time, but they. They hate them around here. Well, it's because of 07. It's, it's kind of They early. should hate Beckett and Dice K more. But they haven't really published <laughs> Maybe his... Maybe even J.D. Drew. Yeah. They haven't really published his uh, farewell tour, tour if, you, if you will. It's just, And this is the only time he's going to be out here. So I, I wonder if later in the year, fans in other ballparks will start to give him a bit of a hand. Or maybe they won't. I don't know. Uh, I think people were saving it for the last game that ended up getting rained out. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Well, then they will be back. If the they Indian, need to. The yeah, the Indians gave Big Poppy a gift though. Mm-hmm. They gave him a day off. That's right. Yeah. And they didn't make him play in the snow. That's right. Uh, that's. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling he was the one calling the shots for Could that uh, canceled opener. Yeah. What do you think, Poppy? Too cold. <laughs> Too cold. As he's eating a big pot <laughs> of chili. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Poppy. Yeah. With the weather being so crappy, Pee Wee brought up. What they used to do in the major leagues for opening day. What did they used to do? Well, they, in the past, I don't know if they always used to do it, but I think for a couple of years, they, they, especially once teams started having indoor stadiums, dome stadiums, and started to expand to other uh, areas of the country, down south, out west, that they tried to open up either in a dome stadium or a, in a warm weather city. And uh, they did that for a while. And it's it it worked out well for rain outs, snow outs, cold outs, or whatever you want to call them. There there were very few of those. I guess the the, the teams in the uh, in the north complained that they never got to play on the actual opening day at home. So that's what. Well, I mean, it's the same way with the Super Bowl and college bowl games. They know the weather's not good, so they do the smart thing. Mm-hmm. All domes or warm weather stadiums. Mm-hmm. Why? Baseball should do the smart thing. Yeah. I don't want to go to any games in April or even May. Yeah. I don't want to go. The Mets are in town next mm-hmm. week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I could see DeGrom or Harvey or Syndergaard. Right. And I'd love to see them. I don't want to go. Yeah. The weather is going to be too cold. Yeah, unless you can get a, a day game and you know from the weather report it's going to be decent, you got to really pick your spots in the spring. Yeah, I think it should be that way again. And, I mean, you still have teams that don't make their home opener 
until the middle of the next week. Right. Or even after two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about pushing spring training back? Maybe having an extended spring training. Uh, what do you mean by extend it? Start it earlier or let it go later? Let it go later. Let it go later. And the earliest games would be in May. And Well, basically what you're talking late about April. Is, is shortening the regular season. Yeah. Well, you know, that's going to that's gonna cost the owners money and that's not going to happen. Uh, a couple of things that they've done. Maybe they need to figure out a way to do separate admission double headers. And, you know, they won't lose as much money. But they did away with... Uh, single admission double headers, and and that's uh, that has stretched out the the schedule along with the extra eight or ten games they play with the bigger league. So uh, anything that's going to take money out of their pockets, they're not going to do. So we'll go from baseball to the rink now, and we'll start off with the Monsters, who are in a playoff spot right now with a 40, 21, and six record with 91 points. They are second in their division and third in the conference. Yeah, they, they're playing good hockey, having a good year. Uh, they made the playoffs last year, I believe. I don't know how far they went. Didn't go too far, did they? No, not the Monsters. Not the Monsters. This team that was the Monsters. Well, this, this is a new team. Yeah, well, this is the, the Blue Jackets minor league team. I thought they'd been... Oh, okay, that's right. They just changed. Never it's the mind. Mon yeah. Never mind. You had like an hour to prepare this, and you uh, still got it wrong. I haven't messed up the person's name yet. Yeah, that'll come. Why don't you take me through the statistics for the team and the players? These are actually some difficult names. Trent Vogelhuber. Vogelhuber? I didn't even, I didn't Oliver know. Bjorkstrand. Mm -hmm. Marcus Hennekanen. Who? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe if I practiced it and didn't just look it up now. But anyways, the Monsters are having a pretty good season. Uh, leading the team in points is Michael Chaput with 44 points. Leading the team in goals and second in points is Daniel Zarr. Hmm. So it looks like a pretty balanced team. And you have Sonny Milano there. With 28 points, who's supposed to be a good hockey player. Uh, he was last year's draft pick by the Jackets. Sonny Milano. Oof. Yeah, yeah. We haven't gone to a game yet this year, have we? Oh, I have. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't get to one. I think I went to one. I got invited. That's right. You, uh, did, uh, you sat down with the... No, I went to two. Okay. I went to two games. You had good seats, right? Yeah, we had a box once... Uh, and we had good seats because our friends' parents have mm -hmm. season tickets. Yeah, uh, they're drawing well. I, I see with it, you know, they at home they're playing they have a very good home record at twenty three seven one and four at home. So they're really hoping to to finish strong in their last three games so that they can get uh, your home some home ice advantage. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm I'm curious if we can even listen to the games. Uh, or see the games in the playoffs. Are they going to be televised? Or? I don't know about it. There'll probably be some televised. You can always get them on uh, on WKNR. Okay. That's good. I forgot about them. They used to hand out water bottles with that yeah. radio uh, station on them. Yeah. When they were the Barons. Yeah. I don't know if they still did that. Yeah, so they've got three games left. They're uh, playing today. This is Sunday, April 10th. they got Rochester, and then they got two more games, the 14th and 15th. Who are they playing? I already forget. I um, looked it up a second ago. I don't know. I have to look up the oh, schedule. Oh, you just... I no. thought you had the schedule no. up. No, I'm on the... are you spouting these out of your ass? <laughs> I just know... I know things. I They're just... playing the Charlotte Checkers. Okay. I beat both you games? to it. Yes. Okay. Home and away? No, it can't be. It's got to be both They're home. They're two home games. Okay. With the Checkers. Boy, the struggle is Ooh. real with Pee Wee today. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need, like, a full day to we're prep doing, for the show. We're doing this podcast at 6 a.m., by the way. So. No, we're not. It's like 2 <laughs> on a Sunday when you didn't get up till 11. Actually, I don't think I'm up yet. No, the Monsters play today against the Americans. Then they go up to Grand Rapids and play the Griffins. Then they'll be home ending the season. Oh, the Griffins. With okay. the Charlotte Checkers for two games. Okay. Thank you, Bob. 
But we'll we'll switch to something Pee Wee knows a little bit more, and that's NHL. Don't bet on it. And yeah, true. Uh, the Bruins sputtered oh. sputtered out again at is the that, end of the season. Is that the word sputtered? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I can think of some other things it has to do with the bed, <laughs> and it's what they did in the bed. <laughs> it wasn't good. So not happy. No, I'm not. Well. Yes and no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy with the year as a whole because they were pretty much mediocre is the best you could say. They, they, they were horrible and then they would get on a nice mediocre streak. But uh, that's as good as they ever got. And then di- to be disappointing at the end, I don't know, it's, I don't know if you want, even want to be in the playoffs. You know you're just going to get bounced right away by either Washington or... Anyone else? Anyone else. Yeah, anyone's going to bounce them. But they would have ended up getting one of the top seeds and, yeah. get, and getting croaked. I'm happy, but I'm upset at the same time. We weren't supposed to even be this good. Yeah. We weren't. We were supposed to be at the bottom of the league because of everyone we got rid of. With Lucic and Dougie and Boychuk the year before and Sagan a few years before that. Yeah. And, you know, Campbell eventually went free agent. We let Pae go. Thornton went free agent. We lost a lot of people. All those names. All those... A lot of those names are on the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's going to tell you something. Uh, why, are you th- why are you getting rid of guys who have won the Stanley Cup? You think you're improving the team? No, they're tearing it apart. I have no idea why. I'm not really not close enough to the situation to know what the hell they've got in mind. You know we played our backup goalie for the last game? Yeah, well, you know, I'm not Why sure. Why did we play our backup goalie for a game we have to win? You know, I'm not sure. That was I... the dumbest decision Claude's made in the last week. One of the dumbest. I'd have to look at that. I don't know if he, if Rask got Illness. hurt Illness. He was on. sick. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. When he's sick, he, he doesn't play. Oh, yeah. He's a pansy. Oh, I didn't know what happened. Cause I, all I saw was a, a, a highlight of him... Of Rask going off to the dressing room. We need, get hurt we need to trade him. Or trade him. Because well, he's useless. Yeah, he he's, gets sick for the big games. Yeah, yeah, maybe he was scared. Maybe he got a bellyache. He got a nervous belly. And he couldn't play. So, But anyways, this... this Oh, my computer froze again. Well, no, this isn't the team we're used to. We're tearing it apart in the wrong direction. Yeah, We're fifth in goals per game. 19th and goals against. That's usually the other way around. Yeah. Usually we have a putrid offense and a great defense. We're 7th in power play percentage and 11th in penalty kill. I don't, yeah, I don't understand it. They, they don't look that good when they're, it's, when they're playing. Our defense is terrible. Yeah. We have a bunch of young guys on defense. Mm-hmm. Krug had a, a pretty good year. And Chara's just old. He's lost a step. And, and when someone that big loses a step, it's a big step. You can tell. <laughs> it's a big step he lost. His reach can't make up for his slow skating anymore. Yeah. You know, he's had a you know, long, good career, and uh, he still is smart, a smart player, and he st- he still could be on the team and be helpful. But he's not. He, you don't need him to be your best defenseman anymore. What did you think about Claude Julian not letting Marshawn or Krejci shoot? In the shootout the other day. Why do you do that? I don't understand. That's, that's terrible. They're our best shooters. Yeah. Especially Krejci. Yeah, Krejci, Marchand, Bergeron. You know, why would you go with any other three guys? Bergeron went. Yeah. He's more of an assist guy, but when you say shootout, Krejci is my number one. Well, who else did they use? Did they use Pasternak? I don't remember who they used. Uh, I know who they didn't use. Yeah, that's yeah. That that doesn't make much sense. I guess they have the stats in front of them on, on what the shootout stats are, but... Are you firing Julian? Because I'm firing Julian. I think I think uh, I'm on that fence. I, I'm leaning over I'm, the side that says fire him. I'm done with the Homer Simpson of hockey. Yeah, well, I'm I, done with Claude Julian. Yeah. Well, I don't... The, the main thing I worry about with him is that the players have just stopped listening to him. That seems to happen with a lot of coaches... They t- tend to wear out their welcome, or people just kind of tune them out. I don't know if that's what's happened or not, but it, he certainly doesn't seem to be able to fire them up. In we, fact, we don't have much talent anyways. Yeah, that's true. But the last two games, pretty much symbolic of the whole 
season. They beat the Red Wings soundly, five to two. Played a great game. Yeah, great. Outshot them by like twenty, and then they turn around and and, uh, and submit a stinker yeah. against the the, the in Senators a, in a must win game. A must win game. A good team doesn't lose uh, a must win game by the score of six to one. Gosh. I could see them losing a close game. But they got crushed. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I. Yeah, they, they were never in it. Pee Wee looks across the table at Bob. Bob has this radio intro for Birdie. It's in the hole! <laughs> That's our golf introduction from now on. A bunch of silence and then we, we go into the, the shot. 30 feet uphill. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about the Masters now. What do you have to say about it here? You're a golf fan, aren't you? Yeah, I like, I've always liked golf. Uh, I didn't like to watch it that much. I liked to play it years ago, and I was much more interested in, uh, much more up to date on it back then. But yeah, golf is great. Great way to spend the Sunday afternoon watching golf on TV, especially one of the majors. And we got the Masters going on now. The best tournament there is, in my in my opinion. Who's your money on for the Masters? My money, my money's on Spieth. My heart's on someone else. Who's your heart on? My heart is... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do... <laughs> I really would like Bernhard Longer to win. Right now, he started the day one under, two shots back of the lead. The guy's 58 years old. If he pulls a miracle today and wins, he will be the oldest man to win any major by 10 years. The oldest major winner ever was 48. No, it was Nicholas, right? No, that was someone who won the Open. I was someone called Old Tom Moore or someone. Old Tom old Moore. Tom, they even had old <laughs> in front of his name. I, I I never knew that until I saw it today. Old Tom Moore. We need more players won like the, that. We won. need young Jordan Spieth. Yeah. Or someone who's small. I, I don't know. Pee Wee someone. Or, or Smoke. Old. <laughs> old. Smoky, Smoky Jason Day or something. Yeah, yeah what's a old, old baseball name? What's old in German? A U L D. Old. Alt. Alt. I think. Yeah. I don't so remember. Alt exactly. Bernard Longer. And uh, 48. Nicholas was 46. So okay. he'll beat the Masters record by 12 years. Oh, it, that's what I was thinking. Masters. Yeah. Not just in general. Any major. Any major. Okay. 10 years. It just. So you're going with the old guy because you're an old guy. So yeah. I guess I'll just go with Spieth because I'm a young guy. Well, and yeah, and you know, Longo has a chance for the main reason that he he loves the course. He plays plays the course well. Who doesn't love the Augusta? But he plays. He, <laughs> he loves to play there, and he plays well there, mm. even at his age. Uh, there was one. Uh, there's another German player. Oh, I can't think of his name, but he's a young guy, and he was saying that when he plays longer. Uh, over in the European Tour, he beats them everywhere, beats them consistently. And he, but ex except when they come to Augusta, he can't beat longer at Augusta National. Huh. So he just. The main thing is today the final rounds is going to be played in a little colder weather than they used to. Not as windy. I think that might have helped longer. It's been windy a couple of the days, and. Uh, they're thinking that people are going to have to have a longer... The ball's not going to carry as well, so people will be taking longer irons into the greens. And longer is taking a longer iron to begin with, so I'm not sure if that helps him or hurts him that it's cold out. But, mm -hmm. you know, he's got a, a one or two club disadvantage going into the greens. That's probably what helped him on the windy days. He was able to come in lower mm -hmm. than, than the other guys. So. And that's probably what killed Mickelson and Watson. Oh, yeah, Mickelson. They're did. both they're both bounced. Yeah, didn't make the cut. Yeah. yeah. Which is disappointing for me because those are my two favorite golfers because oh. I'm a lefty when I golf. Bubba missed it too, right? That's what I just said, Watson and lefty. Oh, I Mickelson. Got, oh, that's right. Okay, never mind. Does that count as a mess up of a name? No. You okay. still, you're still due to mess up someone's name. Okay. Who's tied for third right now, right behind Longer? Who is that? Hideki Matsuyama. Oh, I was hoping you'd mess that one no, up. No, I get that. You can get that, but you can't get Kevin Love. No, or Jason Doy. Oh. 
I don't know. Do you think that the Masters is still an amazing spectacle of golf for people to watch, or do you think it's really tapered off? Because I don't. I, I I feel like a lot of people I know do not care. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't see much difference. It, it might go in some cycles. I, I think a lot of it depends on who's playing. Of course, when uh, Woods was at the top of his game, obviously there was a lot of interest across golf, uh, with golfers and non-golfers. Just, just the fame of Tiger Woods playing in who? The mass- Tiger Woods. Oh, I thought you said Tiger Wolves or no, Walls. Wal- Woods. Yeah. Wal- 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 okay. That guy. The Nike guy. Anyways. You can only mention him two more times and we're cutting him off. Wow. <laughs> And it, there was a lot more interest to that, but it had to do with Tiger Woods. Now, I don't know if you've got as many colorful players. You've got a lot of players that can win. Spieth has been hot. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, he's been the best player in the majors for and the last year and a half. McElroy is surprisingly back. Why? He had a horrible third round. He's at plus two right now. And he shot a 77 11th. yesterday. So he's five. He's, he's five yeah, he's five back. He's, he still can win. Oh, yeah. That's what, when Nicholas won back in 86. That's I think where he it, started, five back. It'd be really interesting to see Matsuyama win. Yeah. Japan would go nuts yeah, if he won. Good. To finally see a great Asian golfer, it, it, you know, it'd be interesting. It would be. It would be. I don't, I can't imagine, uh, I can't remember if we've ever seen anyone like KJ. KJ Choi. Choi. I don't know. I mean, I I don't think he ever won the Masters or really competed this high up for a Masters yeah. jacket. But I, I know the guy who came closest, if he didn't win, was Aoki. Isao Aoki. And I don't even know if you pronounce that name wrong or not. You'll so. never know. Yeah. Isao, I-S-A-O, Isao Aoki. Okay. I believe you. You should look no better than that. <laughs> Anyways, but the thing I don't hear anything, anyone talking about going into the final round, the, the poor slob in second place, Smiley Kaufman. Who, I think, who I, is he? He sounds like someone who would just be happy coming in second. <laughs> it sounds like the, someone down the road at the, the municipal course, the pro from the municipal Municipal course, yeah, down the down the street from uh, Augusta, he just wandered into the wrong place, and they said, "Ah, oh, what the heck? We got a slot for you." Well, hell, Jason Day and Dustin Johnson are still in it too, mm-hmm. at even. Yeah, and obviously you've heard of them. Mm-hmm. I never heard of Smiley Kaufman. No. I heard of everyone else on the leaderboard. Yeah, I I think golf has kind of lost its allure because it's boring. What do people love now? They want the high action, fast pace of basketball. They want dunks. They want football. They want those high scoring football games. Yeah. I don't think people have the attention span anymore for golf, which is sad because there's nothing better than going out to a golf course on a nice summer day, drinking, uh, you know, hitting the ball around between beers. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly the way you do it. Um, I was a lot more interested when I played more. So maybe I, I would have played, again. but. My cheap father never got me clubs that were my size. Well, you didn't need to grow six inches in the in the winter time and yeah. make them useless. But in his defense, I golf lefties, so they're more, they're like double the price. Yeah. What? You could but still take I it make up? up for it. There's I, what I do at the beginning of spring every year, mm-hmm. with that first real nice day, I open my windows, and I play. My PGA Tour games on my PS3. There you go, yeah. And I turn up the sound, the background, the background sound, and they have birds chirping in the courses. And I play Augusta, and I play Pebble Beach, and it's it, that's my version of golf because I can't actually do it. Pretend golf. You yeah, know, you could do it. You got an old ninety-year-old guys could play golf. I don't see why you can't. I, I'm way behind. <laughs> Well, you catch up. I didn't. I didn't start till I was in my thirties. I can't imagine. I, you know, I can't imagine me every every tee just shanking into the woods or the water. You will every for one. a while. You will for a while. For a while, I will probably every time. I'll probably just be better off chucking it down the the course. The thing about playing golf is, there's always like one or two shots towards the end that keep you coming back. Like you play like crap the whole round. You you play golf for a quick nine. I would do that. And I would play crappy. And then on the ninth hole, which was a par three in the course I used to play, I'd put one within like four feet of the stick. And I'd say, 
oh, putting for birdie. <laughs> Whether he made it or not, I, I was pretty much a short of par on the last hole. And you, you go off the course, heading to the clubhouse, go, oh, I, I can't wait to play tomorrow. You know? Yeah. All right, we're going to go from the course to the hardwood. Talking some basketball before the playoffs start. Okay, on the court. Uh, Cavaliers, uh, not too much news out of them. My computer's touch screen never works while I'm recording. I don't know why that is. I wonder if it has something to do with your software. It might, running. but I'm not used to this actual scrolling life. Yeah, I, I cannot get back used to Usually, because the websites take so long to finally let you scroll... But with the touch screen, I can scroll instantly. Welcome so to now my I world. actually have to wait. I feel like I'm in the Stone Age without oh. a touch screen. Now you know what I deal with. Anyways, in the Eastern Conference, uh, the Bulls can miss the playoffs. They are two games behind Indiana. They are now. Right now, they'll miss it if it started today. I, I enjoy seeing that because I think Derrick Rose is very overrated. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he's been a... An issue, a problem. I don't like Joakim Noah. And Bo- I don't like Boozer. I think he's still there. You hated that they fired their coach? Thibodeau? Yeah, did you? I don't think I, I hated that. Oh, I thought you liked Thibodeau. I don't... Well, maybe I didn't hate it because it's not his fault they kept choking. Mm-hmm. They mean, it kind of was, but the fact is that his best player was out almost the entire time, every season. Right. And I guess it makes sense for him to go someplace where he can actually build a winner again. But in reality, if David Black could get fired for winning, yeah. then Thibodeau could get fired for choking in the basketball, playoffs every year. Basketball in oh. general is like that. They, I think it's the worst game of all the, the major sports for, for getting, coaches? getting yourself fired. Yeah, I, mean, I say so. They do not have patience at all. So, yeah, it looks like on the east side, like you said, the, the Bulls t- currently on the outside looking in, and only the Pacers uh, can can fall from the eighth spot, so the other top seven are all set. Yeah. Either way, the Cavs will have a, a rival to play in the first round, Indiana yeah. or Chicago. Pacers or the Bulls. Although Detroit could drop, mm-hmm. too, but Detroit, you know, still still a rival. I, I, like I've said before, the, the Cavs should... Go to the finals. They have to go to the finals. They should. They and they, have to yeah, go. they do. It looks like a well. I can't say it's an easy trip out, but you never know what can happen. Boy, it'd be a disaster if they don't go to the finals. In my mind. Yeah. And in the West, you still have Dallas and Utah and Houston. Currently, Dallas and Utah are in the seven eight, but Houston could still make it. But that's not what anyone cares about in the West. It's whether Golden State's going to get 72 or 73 wins again. Yeah, two games or, to go, and they got 71. They play the Spurs and the Grizzlies. Now, what I think is going to happen, they'll beat the Spurs. Mm-hmm. I know you're thinking the Spurs are the better team, and they'll beat the Spurs. But the Spurs are not going to play their starters. They have nothing to gain from a victory. Mm-hmm. They have the second spot locked up. And Popovich is well known for benching his He's stars. Notorious, notorious for There's that. There's no way they play their starters. Golden State will win. However, their next game against Memphis, they could still take Portland's spot. Didn't they just lose? Uh, didn't they just beat the Grizzlies by a point? Who did they just beat? Yeah, I think it was the, the that was San Antonio. Oh, okay. Well, no, they beat the Grizzlies too by a point. A hundred to ninety-nine, right? Yep. And they beat the Spurs 112 to 101, but there wasn't much playing. And then the the Tuesday we went to the baseball or the the day before we went to the baseball game Tuesday, mm-hmm. April 5th, Minnesota beat them in overtime. That's right. Mm-hmm. I think they should make it. I don't know if it's going to be a distraction for them. I, it'd be something if they if they're going all out for the record and someone gets hurt on the last day or something, someone they need. But well, the Cavs know what that's like. <laughs> To play going to the playoffs without your full roster. Yeah, I think Memphis will beat them. Mm-hmm. I think Memphis is going to beat them. And I don't think this record even matters. Yeah. Everyone cares about it, but it's not about records. It's about the hardware. It's about championship. Championship. I mean, Cavs fans would be livid if they went for the record and didn't win the championship. Right. The Cavs, Granted, yeah. Golden State fans, they have that championship now. From last year, but... Cavs need a championship, I obviously. Think, I think they should be resting their players, Golden State. 
Oh boy. I that's, I wouldn't go for the a, record. That's I a wouldn't. hard call. That's a hard call. I'm sorry, but here's well, the thing: if the coach could get fired if they don't win the championship, why would he put his job on the line so the so they can get a stupid record? How do you fire a guy who goes seventy three and just doesn't win two in a row? He wins seventy three games in the regular season, and then maybe he doesn't make it, you know, to the championship for for the second year in a row. They don't do the repeat. Well, how do you fire a guy who went? Took your team from last wow. to first, brought him to the finals, and has him in first place halfway through the next season. Didn't and David Blatt. Oh, I thought you were talking about LeBron. I was going to say they didn't fire LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but LeBron can't coach the team. Yeah, well, he's trying. Yeah. It's, it, I'm sorry, but uh, scheduling isolation plays for yourself isn't coaching. Mm, yeah, well, I don't know. I uh, Actually, I'm not really that interested in the record. I'm not either. Myself. I mean, and they, they make it great. They don't. They don't. I won't care. Mm-hmm. Although it would be nice to see them get the record and know that one of the few teams that beat them were the Celtics. That's right. Yeah. Well, the Celts did play them tough. The the Celts when they played them and they beat them and they they were doubling the guy who who was out in the three point range and made them move the ball. The first guy out out on the top of the the, the three point line got doubled. Mm. They never had that first shot. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Did we? Yeah. I thought we... <laughs> the Celtics lost to Atlanta the other night. The Celtics have fallen to fourth. Mm-hmm. And they have a chance to fall even further. Yeah, they could fall to sixth. That's, yeah, not good. I'd but, like to see them get a home court advantage series. Yeah, that would be nice. But, I mean, Atlanta. Atlanta's come on at the end of the season. Anyways, they're up now up in third. And wow. Toronto, who's had a strong season, still uh, mm-hmm. in second, and they're set there. Yeah, it'd so. be interesting, but you can't even seriously consider anyone other than the Cavs, the Warriors, and the, and the Spurs. Yeah, there are only two teams I don't want to play as a Celtics fan. That's Cleveland and Toronto. Cleveland because they're great, and Toronto because they've had our number all year. Really? Yeah, I don't think we've lost to. I don't think we've beat them once. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't want to... Well, that, that can change. That can change in the playoffs. I've seen teams in playoffs in the past where they had a rough time, a rough go th- during the regular season, and then all of a sudden it's a whole different story in the playoffs. Yeah, but I'd rather not take my chances on that. Well, well you know, the Celtics aren't going anywhere anyways. They're going to win no. the series, maybe, and then it's going to be... The off season, bye-bye. and then we're going to get LeBron, and then we're going to get Durant, too. And then D. Wade <laughs> yeah, and Chris right. Paul and Melo are going to come. And we're going to have the big six. How is that even the Celtics? <laughs> the big six, yeah. The Celtics. They're going to change the NBA laws Thanks. and rules so that we can play six players at a time instead of five. Thanks for trying hard. See you next year. Yeah. Well, at least it's a respectable team. Yeah. I enjoy watching the games and we can win any game, mm-hmm. which is all I ask for out of a team that can't win a championship. They can At least make anyone. every game close. They can play with anyone, but they, they rarely have seemed to have a, an easy game. Cavaliers are ending the season. They blew the game last night in overtime with uh, Kyrie's turnovers. Hmm. But the Cavs end the game at home, end the season at, with two home games versus Atlanta and Detroit. So they are going to be able to play spoiler. Granted, they should probably rest LeBron. I'm not playing LeBron these next two games. I would play him sparingly. Just mm-hmm. enough to keep his hand in, keep his eye. Maybe give him a whole day uh, off and then play him in the last game for I wouldn't even play half. I wouldn't more. even play Kyrie or Love. Because they're so on. injury prone. That's right. Like they're more injury prone. Le- more injury prone than LeBron. I wouldn't play all three of them. I'd bench. Wouldn't play all three. I'd tank these next two games. You'd do a Popovich, huh? Yeah. A Why? Double, a double pop? They can't gain anything from it, and they don't care who they play. They're better than every other team. Yeah. No yeah, matter which way they put it, they're either going to play Chicago, Indiana, or Detroit, it looks like. Yeah, there's no reason for them to take any chances. They just want to get through these games without being injured. And keeping people sharp. That's all you need to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else they got going on, you know, as far as their quote-unquote chemistry is. Mm-hmm. I don't understand that. I haven't understood it all year. 
I've said in the past, you don't you don't have to have chemistry as long as everyone plays well. You don't have to like each other. That's true. And we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Uh, next week, we'll come at you with a more expanded playoff look in the NBA, mm-hmm. an expanded look at the NHL. And we'll have a better idea what's going on in Major League Baseball, too. But before we wrap this one up, because we recorded early last week, we did miss something. I don't know if we would have gotten to it anyways, but the College Basketball National Championship. Mm-hmm. That's right. I didn't get to brag about finishing ahead of you in the tournament. Yeah, bracket. but you didn't win, so you're just first loser. Oh, that's right. And, what, what and you, I'm sixth loser. It's sixth. I was wondering how far <laughs> down you ended up. I don't know. I haven't paid attention. I, I, I didn't check. think you beat anyone out. But. I don't think I returned to the website after. I think you beat the three champion. guys who yeah. didn't uh, enter any team. No, I beat someone else. Yeah. Oh, my touch screen doesn't work still. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, I'm in 10th. 10th? Yeah, of... there's someone, 10th out of, tw- um, I don't know why it doesn't actually number these correctly. 10th out of 15. Oh, good. Something like that. Good job. Uh, well, granted, the three bottom teams didn't put in their lineups, but I beat I beat the Candyman, yeah. my former co-host from well, my old yeah, show. Right. I beat the Candyman. Nick, old Nick. <laughs> well, I had a chance right up to the end. I would have won if, uh, if that final shot for Villanova didn't go in and... Uh, and UNC had been able to triumph in, in the overtime. It was a hell of a finish. Yeah. It's just that's a hell of a finish. The guy for, for the Tar Heels made an impossible shot. A double pump from three-point land. It was a beautiful thing. And then they just... Villanova came down. Guy brought it down. Passed it off. Shoot in game championship. I love looking at all the top groups from the tournament challenge. They're all Villanova fan groups. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. Because they, Would obviously, be. they have. Yeah. About uh, eight or ten of them. Well, <laughs> better luck next year with the Tar Heels. Yeah. They were, I thought they were going to win it for poor old Dean. All right, well, that about does it for this week. We'll be back. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening.